So it's super early in the morning and I am getting ready to start my day. I've got a fresh cup of tea. I am sorting through all of my earrings and I finally picked out the blue jay earrings because I wear different pairs depending on what I'm going to be working on. And I'm trying to talk kind of quietly because Chips is still sleeping and it is a rare morning when he gets a little bit of rest before he has to go drill his Japanese for the entire day into like two in the morning. But I'm getting ready to start my day and I kind of have some thoughts I want to share with you guys about being a person with a lot of interest and how to curate those interests online. Because this morning I was getting ready to post something on Instagram because it's fun. I like posting things on Instagram. I like sharing like, oh, look at something outside. The weather's like this today and doing like a little story about it or like, hey, here's this book I'm looking at. Or especially the fact that I feel like I have a personal museum full of little treasures everywhere. I have tiny little treasures that I have collected from around the world and nobody really is interested in them but me. <laughs> Chips is really sweet but he kind of considers all of them uh, like clutter because he's very zen. He just wants to like have the most minimalistic lifestyle ever. And meanwhile, I love my little kind of personal museum of treasure and I love picking up random things from it and I want to start taking pictures of them and explaining what they are because nobody asks. <laughs> So I want to be able to kind of cherish them and make a little, little like, I don't know, Instagram vlog scrapbook of some of the special things that have somehow tumbled their way into my hands in my life. And also, it's just fun to be able to look at my Instagram, and it's a long, a pretty old now, and see all of the things that I was up to. It's like all of my mom's scrapbooks, and my mom used to run a scrapbook store, so she was really obsessed about scrapbooking. And I get it now. I get why it was so important to her and why it meant so much to her to have those scrapbooks and to flip through all the pictures because it really gives you a sense of your life's scope. And when we live day to day, it's so easy to lose scope of your life. And I will talk about that later because it's not related to what I wanted to talk about right now. But when I went to go post a picture on Instagram, sometimes I'll pick old pictures that I took of animals, sometimes I'll pick something from my little museum of treasures, sometimes it'll be something related to work and I'll put it up. But today I was really tired and I was like, yeah, I just want to kind of get started and I went to go pick a picture and I realized I hesitated because I started worrying, oh, but is this something that people expect to see on my Instagram? And that kind of made me stop because I think about that a lot. What do people expect of me online? What do people expect to see on my Pixel Biology channel, on my Greenhouse channel, on my Instagram, on my Twitter? What do people expect of Siri? And that's really an interesting subject to me because I, I don't think of myself as a brand at all. I think of myself as a human being, a storyteller, a person who somehow has stumbled into these mediums online, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, all of those things. I used to have blogs when I was younger. I used to have tumblers before it got really weird. <laughs> and I think that those are really cool things. I think that having a space online, especially when you move as much as I have in life, is a great way to sort of have your story be built up over time and follow you. And I really love that and I love reading other people's stories. I actually, uh, ever since I was very young and first bumbling about on the internet, have been obsessed with following blogs of everyday people. I don't really like the people I can't relate to as much as the people who just seem to be normal people living their everyday life and maybe there's some really like different circumstances about them. Like they travel the world to take pictures of snakes, for instance, or they live in the middle of, of Vermont and have a homestead and they're raising their family there and retired early because they work so hard. And that's really cool. And kind of, I don't know, I just have always loved that insight into other people's lives and their daily struggles. And I feel like it gives me a better understanding of the world and it helps me to cultivate my sense of empathy and it helps me to cultivate my sense of what I can do in life. And there's a human aspect to those things, those blogs, and now the, the medium has kind of shifted away from blogging 
to vlogging or to Instagram. Uh, really, those are the two big places that I'm part of now that I try to watch what other people who feel like human beings are doing. And I have somehow tumbled into having quite the following on the Pixel Biology channel. And sometimes I get caught up in thinking, not what am I doing as a human being, but what do people expect of Siri? And often I'll actually see comments that say stuff like that too. Um, like I'll see, or on other things, like Twitter posts from artists, I will so often see people like send DMs to artists that I follow on Twitter and the DMs will say stop talking about your favorite flavor of ice cream I only am here to see art and that's kind of what I wanted to ask you guys about and maybe start some conversations about because I think a lot about the line between the human being and the brand and why so many people seem to lose sight of the human being online and want the brand. I see that a lot on my Pixel Biology channel, uh, possibly because, well, I would say we have a younger audience over there, but I see it from the older audience too, so everybody does this, um, regardless of age, just it's something that I see a lot and I've seen a lot uh, over the years of doing this, where people have an expectation of what they want to see from this person online. For me, it's often like WolfQuest. People have an expectation of wanting to see WolfQuest on the Pixel Biology channel. Or like, I have really wanted to start playing RimWorld, but people don't have an expectation of Siri playing such a violent game, right? On Pixel Biology channel. And then also I see a lot of the other YouTubers I follow, I'll go to want to learn more about them and their lives and click on their Instagram and it will be the same pictures of, of selfies or their computer setup or uh, like going to, to gaming events and that's really cool and that's great for them and when I ask them why it's like that and like what about what you had for dinner or what about a cool walk you went on it'll be for the sake of the brand and so I see it from both sides I see the people who are creating very carefully curate their content so that it has a theme it has a level of meeting the expectations people seem to have for the brand, the image that you're giving off. And that's important if that's what you want to do. That is something that I can totally understand. You don't follow, say, like, uh, the Owl Crate Twitter or Instagram, for instance. You want to see about books, right? You want to see about books and their book stuff, their business. And so if they suddenly started tweeting out about turtles, you'd be really confused. <laughs> and you would feel a little put off. Um, so I get that. I get that there's times and places where you want the clarity of the brand. But then what about people like me? What about people like some of the other YouTubers I know? Where they are human beings who are storytellers who have kind of rolled into this and they don't really want to be a brand. They don't really want to be more. But people seem to be very upset sometimes and have expectations of the brand. And I'm just thinking about that this morning because I would love to know your guys' insight of it. And what I mean by that is the conversations that you'll see about, hey guys, I'm starting to think about playing, like for instance, if you're a Sims channel, I see this all the time on Twitter about from Sims YouTubers. Hey guys, I really wanna start playing like, uh, I don't know, uh, let's just say Ragnarok online to choose something completely random. And I know it's not Sims, but I would like to try to keep it on the channel. What do you think? And people will just flood the replies. No, you should make a second channel for that. I really don't want to see it in my sub feed. Yeah, I only follow you for Sims. So if you start posting things not related to Sims, I might have to unsub. Or you'll see people, like I said earlier, who follow artists and they'll be like, look, your cat's cute and all, but I'm here for your digital cats that you draw. So stick to that. And... It just confuses me so much because I guess I came from a place where I learned more about what a person could do. I learned more about how cool and diverse people were by seeing the full range of their interest on their blogs and in the early days of like Instagram and posts and things like that. And I guess I mourn that because when I look at the really curated Instagrams, when I look at the really curated anything, Twitter, blogs nowadays, any of it, 
and it sticks to one specific style of content, I don't feel that human element. And often I feel kind of lost, a little alone, a little bit forlorn, like, oh, this person is so focused and they've got it so polished, I can't relate to them. I don't know how they did this. I feel like their success or their endeavors are so outside of my reach that it's hard for me to relate. So I would love to know what you guys think about all that because it made me hesitate this morning at what to post on my Instagram. Should it be gaming content? Should it be real life content? Should it be animal related content, book content? And I think the reason I have always rebelled against that on my main channel, not picking a certain set of series to focus on, why I have kind of like always mixed it up and done a little of this and a little of that on my vlog channel, why I post pictures of animals, why I po post pictures of flowers, of my dinner, of my games I'm playing, of my books I'm reading on my Instagram, is because I love to celebrate the diversity of what it means to be human and what it means to be me, Sage, specifically. And I think maybe the bottom line comes down to the fact I don't ever plan on being a brand. I kind of tried to dabble in it with our pixel biology channel and sometimes I'll refer to Siri as a separate sort of thing because it has become a persona that I can pick up when Sage is having a really bad day and just wants to like flop on the ground dramatically. I can, I can pull myself up and become Siri and create something cool. So there's an element of that to it, but that doesn't mean I want to be a brand. That doesn't mean, I don't know, that I want to be predictable, that I want to fit into a, a cutout expectation of what Siri is for everything. <laughs> I want to share the full range of the things that I love because to me that's part of telling the human story. And that's why I use Instagram the way I do. That's why I use uh, like Twitter the way I do. That's why I use this vlog channel the way I do. That's why I don't stick to, um, I kind of stick to a theme of games on the Pixel Biology channel. And guess what? That's because that's the games I like. <laughs> but I, I just worry a lot that a lot of people don't realize it because they feel like when they choose to follow someone or subscribe to them. They're curating their content and so they expect their content to stay the way they have in their head, the expectations they have in their head and their heart. When you start following someone because of their Sims content, then it's very interesting to see there's almost an angry backlash when they move away from that. And I'm not saying you have to enjoy that, but why I get so upset so often? I see that a lot. Why? when people follow other people online they almost always seem to treat that other person like it is like the content that they create is a very specific shape of a puzzle piece that they can put into their sub feed and they can have expectations of and when that other person is human and moves outside of their expectations or has interest that then you don't relate to I see a lot of backlash about that. I can kind of understand where you're coming from if you're talking about brands, but what happens when you're just talking about a human being online that you've bumped into and you've started following that doesn't want to be a celebrity, that doesn't want to be a brand, that's just human? And where do you draw the line between that? Where do you guys think the line is at somebody being able to post whatever the heck they feel like and where you start going, well, no, you have expectations to meet because your following is X number of people's uh, people, or like you say you want to talk about X number of things. So why are you talking about frogs? Why are you talking about Animal Crossing? Why are you talking about traveling? You're not a travel Instagram. You're not a travel blogger. Like I see that a lot. And I guess this is just my plea to maybe start a conversation about realizing that we're living in a digital world now. We're living in a world connected by the internet now and that people deserve to be varied and they deserve to have a lot of interest. And I think we need to have a more nuanced view and conversation about when we are following a living human being with a lot of changes in their life, 
with a lot of aspects to them, with a lot of different sides to them, a lot of different interests. And when we are both creating and following a brand and realize that those are two different things. And I just wish that it was easier to define them. And I wish it was easier to talk about them. But I really hope that that the people I see who who are like, oh, I, I can't share the things I'm really interested in. I can't share the things that I'm really happy about today. That's what I hate to see the most, I think, is the posts on Twitter from the artist who had a really happy day. Or maybe they just wanted to talk about something special in their life. And they don't because it's not their art. And they feel like people expect their art on their personal Twitter. And maybe that's what it boils down to. Like, what do you guys think? I know, for instance, Stacy of Stacy Plays has like her personal her personal Instagram and her business Instagram. Is that where you guys think things should go? Because I wouldn't mind setting stuff up like that. And I think that would make me more comfortable and I would understand it more. But sometimes I wonder why that should even be necessary to fit other people's expectations, if that makes sense. So those are just my morning thoughts. I've rambled way too long about these today, but maybe you guys will have some insight and maybe as things continue to move forward the way they are, I just really worry because I'm watching another generation of people come into creating content online because the online world is now part of our modern world and they will create their own YouTube channels that may only ever have 25 people. They will create their own Instagrams that may get a couple hundred followers. And I just worry when you're beginning to have a sense of your own interest and your own things that make you happy and passionate in life, how early on into sharing those things on online mediums are you going to start feeling like you have to curate yourself and prune and trim and organize and brand your own interests and I just I just love the diverse interest and happiness that people have in tons and tons of things and I would hate to see I would hate to see people stifle sharing what they really care about because they felt like they had to live up to other people's expectations especially over something as ridiculous as a theme or a brand on something that is personal and important to you so I don't know, maybe you guys have very clear cut answers and it will just be, well, you should have a business thing and a personal thing. And personal thing is all, all hands off. But what if you don't want to do that? <laughs> what if the, the business that you do is your personal thing? I don't know. And why would people get so mad about people sharing their personal things? Ah, it's just a mess, but that's just my thoughts. Um, and so if you're ever wondering why I don't seem to follow a theme, it's because I... I've always loved the story of the diverse interests that human beings have and I think it's important to set an example that goes all over the place and it does not make me a brand and it will not grow me as a business and that's fine because those are not my goals. <laughs> my goals are just to be happy and to share the lessons and happiness that I have learned through very hard fought and very hard won years with whoever bumbles into this. So, alright guys, I'm gonna get started with my day.